For this lesson, I'm using the 1001 export a video file Premiere Pro project. You'll find that project file with the media associated with this lesson. Double click on it to open it in Premiere Pro. Once your creative work is complete, it's time to share it with the world. There are a wide range of professional options for media file export in Adobe Premiere Pro, but you can often use a preset that does all the choosing for you. I've got my going home sequence open here, and this is a sequence I'd like to export as a file. I'm going to File, Export, Media. And this brings up the Export Settings dialog. I'm going to make sure that my format is set to H.264. This is a popular codec for the distribution of media today. And I'm going to make sure that the preset for that format is set to Match Source High Bitrate. In this case, the source is my current sequence, but I could just as easily have selected a clip in the project panel to export that into a different format. A bit rate is a measure of the amount of information used to store the picture and sound. The higher the bit rate, usually the better the quality of the end result. As I work down all of the options in this dialog, I can see that I've got a series of tabs where I can specify some additional effects I want to apply to the clip that I'm exporting. I can adjust the video settings for the output. And that means specifying things like the width and the height of the image, the number of frames per second, and so on. And you'll notice that these options are all grayed out because I have a checkbox on the right side for match source. If I turn off the checkbox, I can change these settings. I have audio export options, multiplexer options that are specific to H.264, and if you have a specific demand for the way that the video and audio are combined, you can set it here. I can work with captions, open and closed, and I've got some options to publish to social media platforms like Adobe Behance, Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, and so on. Again, we have quite a lot of options in this dialog, but there are really two areas I want to draw your attention to. First of all, we've got the source and output summary. In this case, the source is my sequence, and I can see the size of the frame, 1280 by 720. That number in brackets is the shape of the dots, that's the pixels, the number of frames per second, and so on. As much as possible, you'll want these settings to match your output settings. And of course they will because, again, if I go back to my preset, I've got lots of options here but I'm just going to choose Match Source High Bitrate. By choosing to match my source, I make sure that those important settings are correct. The second important bit of this dialog is the output name. Although this just looks like a file name, you can see there .mp4 is the type of file I'm going to make if I make an H.264 file. It's actually something you can click on to specify where this new file is going to be stored. I'll click on it now and it brings up a regular Save As dialog. This is in Windows, of course. This would be a Finder dialog in Mac OS. I'm happy with that location. I'll put that in my Media folder, and I'll click Save. And if you're happy with the settings, you can click Export, and the file will be created. And that's it. Here is the new file that's been created. As your familiarity with media technology grows, you may find a need for the more advanced options in those menus. But much of the time, choosing to match your source will work.